Tonight's episode is brought to you by 80stees.com. Check out this They Live shirt I got. I came here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. What'd you get, Alex? Well, my lifelong dream of finally being in the Cobra Crimson Guard has come to fruition. I am a full-fledged member of the Crimson Guard for Cobra, so my life's work is complete. Thanks to 80stees.com. And you can go to 80stees.com right now and find shirts uh, from your favorite cartoons. Favorite movies? Favorite horror movies? Favorite TV shows? And so much more. And on top of that... Just for you, Slashaholics, you get to benefit from this, too. 30% off your purchase at the site. All you got to do is type in the promo code at checkout, slash tracks 30. Be sure to look in the description and pin comment for that promo code. It's going to save you a lot of money on some amazing shirts. Yeah, 30% off is definitely a very good discount, and it's... Even more of an amazing discount when you think about how qual- like how high quality of the shirts are and what the properties that you're able to have put on these shirts. So and it's an amazing fast. deal. And they get to you really fast. It does not take long at all. No. Uh, one other thing I was going to say about this amazing deal is I don't think I've ever worn a shirt that was better screen printed. This shirt is like perfectly centered. Uh, oh, yeah. Perfectly centered. Whoever's running the press over there... Kudos, bravo, bravissimo, 80s Amazing work. And thank you for sponsoring this episode. Check out the animated intro, and we'll be right back with you. Good evening and welcome to episode number 13 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, first of all, it's good to be back in the studio recording a brand new episode with you. Love it. Uh, We're going to celebrate the heat wave in Arkansas by putting out new content and a whole new (laughs) new show uh, by you also drinking a crystal clear Pepsi. So you're, you're very much in a celebratory mood, aren't you, bud? Oh, yeah. we got two videos, two episodes that have, you know, top 50,000. So between the heat wave and that, I broke down. This is my last Crystal Pepsi. So unless I find a way to get some from Canada or they end up releasing this here in America in August, this could be it for me until they decide to put it out again. So I thought it was worth it, though. It's worth Do you it. have a passport that you could enter Canada with to get more Crystal Clear Pepsi? Yeah, but I just it's it's really expensive to fucking drive from Arkansas to Canada. So yeah, all my yeah. crystal Pepsi money would go into gas. I'd come I back think one. I think that maybe you should pull some strings with the Slashaholics, and there's got to be some Canadians up there that watch the show and like see if you can work out some sort of trade or something. Uh, maybe if they I like. Know, if anybody wants to donate to the cause uh, to get me some crystal Pepsi, which is so important with everything going on in the world, I know. Uh, let me know in the comments and we'll get something going. Yeah, no, it's super important. So if you guys are watching the show, if you're one of the 50, 50, 55,000 people that are viewing the show weekly, uh, make sure Josh is in a good mood because the heat is killing my friend out over there. He's having a hard time, but he didn't leave any sodas outside of his rig today. So, or inside of his rig or wherever by his rig. Yeah. That, you know, listen, 
if you left, say you got some crystal clear Pepsi from some Canadian slashaholics, and then it was so hot one day, and you're unloading the loot that you got, you know, from the post office. And what if you accidentally left them in your car and they exploded? How would you react to that? I would have to commit uh, high Kai. Uh, Harry Carey? Harry Carey. <laughs> That'd be it. That would be it. Yeah, maybe, maybe man. I, I Little update, by the way, for anybody curious. Can you see it? I see it, yeah. You got a nice little ponytail going on. You got a hair update and a crystal clear Pepsi update all within the first two minutes of the show. Um, so I'm not going to do anything else. So oh, here comes Trump. With no, the, the I'm, first kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, here comes Trump. Uh, so before we get into the meat and potatoes of the show and open the first segment of episode number 13 on this beautiful evening, Josh, um, mm -hmm. can you please tell me what shirt you're wearing from uh, 80s Tees tonight? Yeah, I threw back on the I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. They live. Uh, the the late, great Rowdy Roddy Piper, one of my favorite movies. And we had a lot of people request it for Slash Tracks. It's not exactly a super bad one. It is cheesy, and there is horror elements. So I'm going to put it on a poll in the future, and if it gets voted for, it gets voted for. You're, uh, you're going to put it on a poll? Uh, a they live on a poll match? <laughs> I got a They Live on a Pole DVD slash tracks episode match. And a bottle of Viagra. Right yeah, on a, on a kendo stick. Um, <laughs> what are you wearing? Josh, Josh, I'm wearing, I'm glad you asked. I'm wearing a <laughs> Chicks Dig, Chicks Dig My Ride Mario and Yoshi Super Mario World shirt. And Josh, very excited about this shirt because green, I think, is my color. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking. It's very slimming. I, I'll tell you one thing I really like about these shirts. I've never worn a shirt where the collar doesn't, like, fold over on itself. It And it stays, it feels like a new shirt if you wear it three or four times. Even when you wash it, it still feels like a new shirt. I thought you were about to say it. Where's like a new shirt? It feels like a new shirt the first time you wear it. <laughs> no, it's just, it's, I don't know, whatever uh, quality t-shirts he's doing the screen printing on over there at 80s Tees, he's doing the Lord's work. He's doing magic. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Kevin. Great yeah, Kevin. Right over there. Kevin, excellent, excellent job with the shirts and just the quality and just... Your social media is blowing up, Kevin, and you didn't even know you had uh, uh, really a big social media presence. You got ads on Google. You didn't even know you had, Kevin. So Exactly. There's a YouTube yeah. ad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It existed. That, I, I was like, okay, I just had to make sure I wasn't going crazy. I had screenshots from it. Uh, <laughs> so it, it definitely existed. Um, so do, the chicks dig the ride just for a second, like as soon as you need to like make a high jump and you let him die. Like how does How do you cover that? Well, there's multiple rides. There's green Yoshi, there's blue Yoshi, there's red Yoshi, there's yellow Yoshi. Uh, I just, different ride for different level, man. And if Princess Peach is there for the ride, she's there. And if she isn't, she isn't. Piss on her. Can I give you, Can I give everybody a little old hint for Super Mario World? If you uh, happen to play, uh, play it on, I don't know, uh, as a download on uh, Switch or you have a Super Mario. Yes, or DS, whatever. Hey, boy, yeah. There's a level, I can't remember exactly where it's at, but if you find yourself in a level where you're riding uh, like a log or something that takes you automatically through the level, like those uh, things that go on the little lines, you know, um, and there's nothing but Koopa Troopas floating and flying everywhere, put on the cape before you go in, and as soon as the match, as soon as the round starts, start spinning in the cape and don't stop. If you do that, you're going to end up hitting a Koopa Troop at one point, and if you do it right, the Koopa Troop is going to bounce off your cape through the entire round, and you'll rack up a couple hundred uh, extra lives. Kind of like uh, in Super Mario Brothers 1, when you can jump on the turtle in World 3-1. Uh, we called it Jigging the Turtle whenever I was a kid. Uh, it had plenty of names. Um, it's kind of like that. So a little old-school gaming hint for you. The jigging the turtle in uh, Super Mario Brothers 1, um, the only time I've ever executed that, I was like four years old. And it was a complete accident. It <laughs> happened. I didn't know what happened. My brother and I were absolutely mesmerized. It never happened again. And I never saw it happen again until YouTube was created. I remember so. doing it, watching my brother do it, and I tried it. And I didn't stop. The time didn't run out, but I died. Like, I got so many lives, and then it killed me, and I got a game over. So the next time I did it, 
I got off of it a little sooner, and I had, like, crown, half fish, half water life. That's what my life, it was like a weird, uh, messed up graphic for how many lives I had. Yeah, because they couldn't go over 99, right? It would just, yeah, yeah, it would just, whatever it was, that's crazy. I. (laughs) If you do it too long and you get one more than you're supposed to, it crashes it and kills you, and you get a game over. So. That's a hundred percent glitch. That is a hundred percent glitchy, right yeah. there. But hey, man, you need those extra lives because I remember one thing about Super Mario Brothers One. That game was really hard. Uh, like once you get to the World Seven, I think it was World Seven or. I don't believe there was an eight back then, or maybe there was. It there was. was seven. Well, World okay. Seven was a was was a harder version of World Two. It had the yeah. underwater level and then the floating fish level. Well, you get to World Eight and it's like a maze in the castle. Yeah. Um, my four or five year old brain could not comprehend uh, memorization of that level maze, and I just I don't think I beat it until I was in my twenties. Oh it man, took I bet- decades. I gotta get you uh, Mario Maker so we can play each other's levels. I designed some uh, old school Mario Brother levels on there for the castle that's maze like, uh, with yeah. doors and warp pipes, and you have to do the right one. Uh, Mario Maker is a lot of fun. Uh, Mario Maker Two for the Switch even lets you make worlds, and uh, they added the Koopalings, which wasn't in the first Mario Maker. Uh, it's a I've, lot of fun. I've uh, seen some I, of those. I get lost on that game. I've seen some of the levels they make on Mario Maker. Uh, they'll they'll just make them as hard as they possibly can. They'll post them to YouTube, and de- you literally have to uh, execute the level 100 percent the way they intended it to, or you're dead. There's no luck involved. I don't try to make them like almost impossible. I mean, I'll give them a little challenge, like with mazes sometimes. But I just like to have fun with it, make it like the games were. Uh, Like, there's no tank level that you can make, but if you take the airship level and you just manipulate some of the the things that you have access to, like conveyor belts and stuff, you can make it look like tanks. And uh, I've done that. I've I've made a tank level and stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's addicting. Well, you know what else is addicting? Reading our publicity uh, in the comments section for our episodes. Josh, let's get into the mean comment, nice comment of the week. Okay. All right. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a sandwich. So that's kind of the formula that we we've, we've landed on, Josh. I'm not even gonna ask you. We're just going straight into the compliment sandwich here. And if anybody's wondering where the graphics are, we're having to rush this one into production, so there's probably not gonna be any extras here. But this is the mean comment, nice comment segment. Just picture it there. Imagination. <laughs> yeah. Do your best, SpongeBob. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit you with a nice comment. Okay. This is this is pretty pretty quick and straight to the point. I was interested from start to finish, and this is from Hamza Stars. Oh, so, because we got the one person that says, "Wake me up when it's interesting." Yeah, this guy says I was interested from start to finish. Mister Hamza Stars says he loved the show from start to finish. So Hamza, big ups, dude. Thanks for the nice comment. Thank you. Um, here's a mean comment. They always do. There you go. Yeah, here's a mean <laughs> comment. Uh, and this. To me, because, okay, I'll go through all the episodes re- we release through the week. I'll read everything. I respond, for the most part, to every comment. So if you guys leave a comment, you can rely on me to at least write you back. I will. And if you're a dick, I won't write you back. <laughs> but if you're, like, if it's clever and you're trying to be a dick, I probably will write you back. But we had, yeah, we had one mean comment for the entire week. So Josh and I used to get more mean comments almost than nice comments, and... The more views we get, uh, just it seems like the the longer the show is running, it just seems like things are kind of turning in a very positive direction, which is very exciting. But it took a little bit, but I found a mean comment. So are some really, 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 really mean ones, but I don't let them stay. Yeah, no, there's yeah, there's. I've had my feelings hurt recently, uh, weeding out the really bad ones, but uh, they they don't they don't they don't see the. We, we approve and disapprove. We don't let those... Uh, so if you're going to do something really nasty, don't even waste your time. It's not going to see the light of day. Um, but if you're just generally not interested or have a negative comment, we're going to take criticism too. So. Yeah, if, it's, if, if you're being rude or being mean and it actually could help us improve, we'll absolutely leave it on the comments, no problem. But if you're just saying stuff uh, to, to hear your mouth moving, then you can just fuck right off. So how about that? Uh, mean comment of the week says just stop try something else 
friendly advice. And this is from Nobby Sin. So... Go, go knob something. I don't know. Nabby, uh, Nabby, I just want to, I want to break something down for you, pal. Now, there's a little thing when you look at every YouTube video. There's a thing called likes, okay? And you can see how many likes the video has. And there's also a thing called views. If you click on right underneath uh, the actual images, the actual video, you click on the title of the episode, and it'll tell you an exact view count. So I don't know what you think is decent, but if a video has, like, over 54,000 views and you have, like, five to 10,000 likes, that video is probably pretty good. So we're not going to take your advice. You're not going to pass go. You're not going to collect $200. As a matter of fact, Josh and I are going to call you a dumbass, and we're going to put our foot straight up your rear end. So take your comment. Uh, Josh, shine it up for me and stick it straight up his candy ass, okay? Because that's what I think of that. So we're not going to do what he said, right? Yeah, no, we're not it's, at I gotta all. i got to cancel my knitting, my knitting classes. <laughs> oh, right. I, I, yeah. signed, I saw that, and he said try something new. Yeah. But yeah. Well, if you want to knit, that's one thing. That's a whole another ball of wax. Um, let's end this segment, opening segment of episode episode, <laughs> episode 13. I'm so excited to get into the nice comment. I'm stuttering. Let's get into the nice comment sandwich part. We're getting into the heel of it. So we're, we're getting the ass into the segment here. So here we go. I broke an expensive machine at work today, and I felt like crap. Then Alex's shoplifting story about his mom pop, <laughs> popped in my head, and I initially felt better. Thank you, Alex's mom. And that is from uh, Johnny Utah, a uh, star of my favorite movie from the 90s, Point Break. So Johnny's somebody I've been wanting us to uh, say hello to for a while. So yeah, Johnny. Yeah. And I want to say hello to Aaron uh, Vanover, your brother. He's spo- the- You're going to say hello to the spoiler. Yes, to the spoiler. And I also want to say hello to EGSCW. That's another regular uh, for the channel. Uh, thank you for, for watching every episode and for always dropping us a comment. We appreciate that. Man, that's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, and Michael, Michael uh, of course. And Prex- don't. I, I was going to say don't. Say, <laughs> we're not, Prex is eventually going to be cut in to whatever money we make at some point. <laughs> and Prex, here's your check for being involved in every episode. Um, yeah, my brother has been spoiling more than movies for me lately, Josh. He's he collects toys just like I do, and uh, DC just released uh, like a new version of like Batman, Superman, Flash, Aquaman, Dark Seed, all these characters. It, it, there was like a line uh, of these figures Dark in the side. Dark Side. Go ahead. So there was there was a line of these figures in the '80s when we were kids. So they're they're kind of reimagined and re-released. Um, I can't remember the name of the line, but anyway, they're popping up at Walmart's and Targets all over our area. Awesome. So my brother has just been going every to every store as early as he can, buying whatever he finds, and just hoarding them all and spoiling this re-release for me and for everyone else that lives in Lane County or around Lane County in Oregon. So I want to thank Aaron. And say that, yeah, you've been living up to your name of the spoiler, not only with movies and TV show plots uh, for people that haven't seen said media, but you're also ruining my toy collecting uh, habits and uh, just passion for the hobby of toy collecting. He's almost totally ruined it for me. So thank you, Aaron. The spoiler. I think he might have actually been the one that stole that uh, surprise box that you said you were sending me. I have. (laughs) You know what's funny about that, Josh? What? I have your surprise box, and I'm looking at it. Like I'm looking to the left right here. I look. At, I have your your pile of goodies, and Nicole just got you a first class box. So I just need to pack it. Okay. okay? Sweet. Sweet. So if you're gonna call out my tardiness for your surprise box, you freaking puke! Right in front of all the slashaholics. You know what? You you got a big <laughs> head now. You know that. I feel you bad. You're, like, you're sending me like a box, and all I could send you was like some pens and stuff. So what? And, and pins and movies. <laughs> You're in the mutual. We're in the mutual appreciation uh, club, and there's only two members: Josh and Alex. I, I sent him some cool pins though, like uh, GI Joe and He Man. And Stranger Things. I've got them all on top of my TV in my op- in my office. So I see it. Thank you very much for the pins. Oh, you're welcome. I, th- I thought you'd like them. So. Um. Was it Man what, of War was is in there. Was it Man of War? Uh, Man at Arms. Yeah, Man of Arms. Yeah. Man at Arms. Uh, let's get into uh, let's get into the fun facts segment of the show. 
Imagine fun facts right there. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. It takes about 50 milliseconds for us to process visual information. Everything you see technically happened in the past. I'm having deja vu. I feel like we've talked about this. Maybe it was on a Good Times episode. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, um, I have to go back. But yeah, that's that's trippy. Like we're we're it's always in the past, no matter what you do. I think that maybe so maybe. <laughs> I thought you were trying to be funny right there because you're like you're having deja vu about something that I just said because you technically did see it in the past because everything you see right now is in the past. No, I think I think we talked about that on Good Times or something before. Uh, well, good thing nobody watched Good Times, so we're <laughs> fine then, right? I don't know. It has a few hundred views, doesn't it? Our whenever you and I did Good Times and put it on the channel, it would get like thirteen to fourteen hundred views. Um, but when it was actually Good Times. The with Alex and Ryan, I think our biggest episode ever was we did an episode about junior high uh, and we got like 300 views. I think that was the there's some great stories, by the way. But the problem with it is nobody can it's not it can't appeal to an audience larger than the kids you went to school with. Yeah. So it's just not I don't know. So for the 300 kids we went to North Bend Junior High with in Oregon, great episode, maybe one of the best ever. But for the Cheers. Slashaholics, not great. Um, I was going to say, you and I did talk about a time traveling episode one time. Uh, there was a thing where this guy uh, was going to hold a time tra- traveler's ball. And he, what, he, <laughs> he wasn't going to advertise it. So whoever showed up to the time traveler's ball knew about it because they're time travelers. Yeah. So he actually had like food and a buffet set up and dance party and everything. But nobody showed up. So... Marty McFly didn't show up. The TARDIS didn't show up. Bill and Ted weren't there. Or maybe they did. They showed up. They partied all night, but it was like really a shitty party, and it just was a waste of time. Yeah. So they traveled back in time and said and told their past selves, it's not worth it, man. Just go home. <laughs> and that's why nobody was at the party, because they had done it, and they went back in time and stopped it from happening. So their other us's talked to their other us's to... Uh, guide them in the direction of not going to the time traveler's ball. You might be right. Um, that way so they I, can have fun, but also keep the time traveling secret. See? Yeah. Partied all night and said, you know what? Everybody's going to know that there's time travel and they're going to try to get on our thing. So they went back in time and said, don't do it. So they had, they got to have their cake and eat it too. Did you ever see the photo online and it's like been proven that it's not doctored? There's, like, a fight. It's, like, a boxing match in the 90s, and somebody is in the crowd with, like, an iPhone. Oh, yeah. I've seen that shit. Or that guy from, like, 1940 that's wearing, like, 2000s clothing. <laughs> he's, wear- he's wearing an 80stees.com shirt <laughs> with a property of a video game that didn't exist back in, like, 1878 or something. <laughs> what video like- games did exist in 18? 18- the only games that probably existed in 1878 was the game of not dying that day or not starving or not being murdered or not. There's probably a lot of games, but they weren't actually games. They were called just life. Can I God, cut, I hope I got uh, cut in. This is a very important thing that I have to do right here on the show. What okay? is it? It's my last drink of crystal Pepsi. And if I, if I die before they bring it back again, this could be the last one I ever have. I just want to share it with everybody here. So I want to, I want to enjoy that last little bit there. And uh, finish that up and then pull out your McRib you got over there on the table and your Starbucks chicken sandwich that you also have on the table. <laughs> Pretty good? Pretty good? You smell crystal clear Pepsi like people smell wine corks, huh? I'm so okay. sad. Now it's all gone. Okay. All right, Josh. So we're going to get into fun fact number two, Josh. Okay. In Iceland, baby names, they have to be approved by a three-person committee. Good. (laughs) So, uh, like, when Game of Thrones came out and everybody wanted to name their daughter Khaleesi, Mm -hmm. they would have to get that approved, and they'd be like, bitch, please. And uh, it wouldn't get approved, right? Yeah, or somebody would have to... Or when they're trying to come up with Khaleesi and the three-person committee, someone would have to end up bending the knee to sway the other person's vote, probably. 
What do you Bring think? that committee to America. I say let's do it. There's so many names out there. Like when they're like throwing X in it, like uh, Elon Musk or whoever naming his kid XR972 or something. Um, shit like that. Or like uh, every mother in the late 90s naming their son Kyler. Like, we need to put a stop to that. I think we need to round up the Slashaholics and put an end to Khaleesi and Kyler's everywhere, <laughs> the world over. Or trying to, like, instead of using I in a, in a name, using Y, that should be outlawed, too. I, hey, they gotta, get, uh, they gotta get creative. My mom told me, Josh, when I was a kid, I said, why did you name me Alex? And she said, well, I named you, Al- <laughs> I named you Alex because it was easy to spell. <laughs> and I wanted you to be able to spell it when you got to school. And I said, gee, thanks, Mom. Like, I, what kind of signs was I showing uh, that early on in life to where she was worried about, like, probably nothing. I wasn't even born yet. But, like, even as a young child, I was like, was I just bumping into things with my face and, like, falling <laughs> down? Like, what was going on there where she was worried that I wasn't going to be able to spell my name? Oh, wow. Well. Um... <laughs> Maybe that was her projecting her insecurities by not being able to spell Sherry. Uh, when she was younger or something. Two fun R's. Fact. Yeah. Fun fact R's. about your name, Alex. What is? Yeah, uh, drop it. My drop daughter, it Alexis, her name was supposed to be Alexander Luther LaRue, and uh, she ended up being a girl. So it became Alexis Star LaRue. Uh, Star is a middle name that's been... My grandpa's name was Lone, and his middle name was Star. Lone Star LaRue. Uh, and that was my dad's dad. And then my first cousin, who was a really good friend of mine, uh, he died at 14 in a bus wreck. Um, his middle Sorry name was Star. Uh, uh, Sean Star. Uh, and since that, he was supposed to be the one that carried on that middle name, so uh, since nobody else used that in their family, uh, in our family, uh, I decided since Alexis was a girl and I wasn't going to get Lex Luther LaRue like I wanted to, uh, you know, I gave her that middle name Star, and that's how I ended up with Alexis Star. Uh, that I'm, way, she still had Lex in there. <laughs> I'm digging Lone Star. Uh, that's a cool name. And Lone Star. I've got a picture. Oh God, yes. Uh, Spaceballs. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've got. There's a picture. I, I cannot find it. I've been looking for it, but it's a picture of my grandpa when he was about 25, and it's like a black and white. He's got a cowboy hat on. And it looks just like me without freckles, like identical. Um, it's crazy. It looks like I went and did one of those like uh, old west photos, you know, that you can do yeah. at Branson or whatever. Like every every mall, every yeah. local mall has a like a store that used to be like a a Payless Shoes, and now they just do eighteen hundreds western photos. Hey man, oh, there's photos of people I've seen online where it's like it'll be you. You'll look at a picture of you. And then it's like, this photo is from 1852. And it's like, legit, looks just like you. Like, they say that everybody has a doppelganger oh, in yeah. the world. Yeah. Around, around the town I live in, uh, I'm actually from a town, like, three towns over, a little town of about 400 people. But I live in a bigger city, a uh, few few towns over now. I've been stopped in several places, and people ask me if I'm this guy. I can't remember the name now, but it's always the same name. So apparently I've got some doppelganger running around uh, the town I live in here. So You're like, first of all, if I am that guy, uh, is he handsome? And then number two, do you owe him money? Because if that, if it's the answer is yes to both, yes, I am him. And I do get recognized as VIP still to this day. I've had people that used to go to the wrestling shows uh, ask if I'm still wrestling. That's <laughs> pretty cool, actually. Yeah. That's oh, actually oh, very cool. Funny story, I'll make it quick. Uh, my ex-wife's dad hated me my ex-father-in-law. I'm aware. He, he made fun of my wrestling constantly. Uh, even though he was a wrestling fan, you think he would have been like, oh, cool, you're wrestling. No, he, he put me down all the time, uh, said it was nothing. Uh, it's just like backyard wrestling, which it wasn't. I was licensed in the state. And uh, anyways, he, he just he acted like I was just doing backyard wrestling, nothing big, nobody cared. When Alexis was born... Uh, me and my parents and my ex-wife's parent, my ex-wife's parents, went to eat while she was at the hospital. The baby was sleeping, and I had been I was doing weekly shows at the time, and we go to eat at uh, Golden Corral, and as we're in the buffet line, 
they're all at the table. I'm getting my food. I start walking back to the table where my parents and her parents are. And this little four-year-old kid yells VIP uh, from a couple tables over and, like, runs over to me. And her and his mom comes over and says, oh, he just loves your show so much and he likes you even though you're the bad guy. And uh, he, I, I signed an autograph right there at the table for a four-year-old kid in Golden Corral right in front of my ex-father-in-law. Good. His face was so red. It was fucking hilarious. My dad was giggling because he knew uh, how much of an asshole the guy was. Yeah. And, that, uh, yeah. That's a great story. Fuck it that guy. Awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> You're like, um, when I'm finished signing this autograph for this child who thinks I'm a superstar, would you like me to pass you the A1 sauce, Dad? <laughs> Uh, uh, up, hey, uh, turn that some bitch sideways. All right. Yeah, we're gonna stick it up the co- the mean comments ass, and then your ex father in law's ass at the same time. There you go. Uh, when former U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was told his wife was in prison, he replied, "I'm not surprised, but what for?" <laughs> That's real. Okay, this is real. That's great. I don't even know what to add to that. That's. That's perfect. I would probably say the same thing. <laughs> He's like, I know who my wife is. I'm aware of her attitude and, and just her disp- overall disposition. Uh, where do I pick her up from? <laughs> What's the bail? I am the president. I'm very busy here. Uh, FDR was the president for three terms. He oh, was yeah. the last, last president to, to be three terms, 12 yeah. years. He was uh, the inventor of the fireside chats. Like when the economy went in the complete toilet, he was like on the radio talking to America every night, uh, telling him what, telling the American people how he was going to fix it, what he was going to do. He was also famous for saying that uh, America doesn't have a king, you know? Yeah. It's and, not a monarchy. It's exactly. A, and that's why he, you know, was a, was a big proponent of the two term thing. So, yeah, he was no FDR, one of the great. He actually uh, was the father of the New Deal that helped the economy get back. Like the wasn't he part of the interstate highway program? Like he like we have highways now because of FDR, right? Yeah. And all the Medicare and and all that stuff. uh, Social Security. All the entitlements that people get uh, is from the New Deal. So you can thank him for that. Yeah, FDR, man. He not only knew how to fix America, but knew his wife was a rattlesnake deep down. Crazy. Eleanor. Eleanor running wild. Uh, Josh, did you know that sex can help unblock a stuffy nose? I think I uh, have had that happen. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, sex actually unblocks a lot more things than you'd think, Josh. Stuffy nose. Your cock. Um, <laughs> my penis is really stuffy. It feels like it's blocked with something. <laughs> Oh my uh, god! I need some help, Beth. Uh, VIP here, your husband. I need a little help unblocking my, my nose and my cock today, please, Beth. Oh my god! You're like talking to your wife or your girlfriend. You're like, hey, if you care about my overall health and how I can breathe or how I can just you know be me without <laughs> having to worry about all these things that are stuffy and clogged, you'd have sex with me, okay? Because you're being rude. Also. In the same vein, and I think we've covered this one. In the I'm same sorry. vein. In the same vein, not not your cock. I'm gonna go with so if a like an orgasm can actually is a pain reliever. So I think we've actually covered that. But like just to double down on the whole sex being good for you thing. So orgasm, natural pain reliever. Sex, unblock a stuffy nose. So if your woman says or or your man says, "Hey, I'm not having sex tonight. I don't feel good." You'd be like, "Well." Obviously, you're just making crap up because orgasms, natural pain, painkiller, you'll feel better afterwards. So don't give me those excuses. And you'll have a clear head. Yeah. Over, just just Americans, people in Canada, like people in Australia, people everywhere the world over just need to be boning more. We'd have better health. Yeah. Completely. That's the that's new health care plan for everybody. <laughs> I uh, can't afford to actually fix healthcare right now, but I'm going to give the American people some good advice. I want everybody to be having sex more. That's yeah. going to boost the economy. Gas prices will be lower. Uh, everything will be <laughs> will be better if people just had sex more. You wouldn't be worried about your personal finances anymore if you're getting laid, because when I'm getting laid, I'm literally not worried about anything. And also, after I finish, Josh, I'm the clearest headed and smartest I'll ever be at that point in my life. Yep. Because I'm not worried about having sex. I'm not trying to have sex. 
So for the refractory period, you know, an hour, two hours, you ask me anything you want to ask, and I'll <laughs> I'll probably be able to answer it. Uh, Josh, did you know the average public swimming pool contains about 20 gallons of urine? Yes, I did know that. And that's uh, I'm surprised it's not Disgusting. more than that. Who's uh, just pissing in the pool? Josh, Martha. it's it's Martha, the the bigger lady that's out there in the in the little blow up raft thing floating around. That's her. It's her. The guy, the teacher from Happy uh, from Billy Madison, the guy who was the wrestler. He was uh, and then they get the pictures on him and then they extort him. That guy, <laughs> he's peeing in the pool. No man, I don't think I've ever peed in the pool. The chemicals take care of it. Um, you're not like actually swimming in urine by that point. Um, what's Where'd funny you go? is. It's still in the water, but, like, the chemicals and stuff they use, like, destroy it. Like, it, it becomes... I don't, I don't know how to explain it. There's science okay. there. But the kid, it, probably. I took my kids to a water park a couple years ago, and uh, one of their cousins was there. My uh, a sister of mine, and they had a little baby that was probably about 18 months old. And we went and visited them over in the kiddie pool. And when we stepped, we started walking in it, and we got in it, and that pool was about 80 degrees, like, just full of kids. I was like, yeah. back out, get out of the pool, kids, get out of the pool. Because they were just heating that sucker up with their pee. Exactly. It was like, it was like 80 degrees. It was almost hot water. That's how oh. much urine was in the kiddie pool. <laughs> God, it was like a hot, an unintentional hot tub. Yeah. Was it bubbling every once in a while, too, but just on the surface? Yes, yes. Yeah, no. Oh, God, man. Um, yeah, I don't know, even know what to say about that. Like, swimming pools, every time I see a pool, especially nowadays in the summertime, it's like, man, that is going to be fun. I want to jump in that. But I might have just a little bit of trepidation, yeah, uh, trying to think of going in the pool with all that piss in there, yeah. The pee rises to the top. <laughs> yeah, the pee rises to the top, brother, yeah. Yeah, yeah. might be thinking about... Going in another type of body of water. Yeah, maybe maybe a lake or a stream, you know? Uh, hey, uh, did, did what you know, you gonna do, brother, when Hulkamania pisses on you? <laughs> yeah. What you gonna do, dude, when my bladder pisses all over you? <laughs> That's gonna be him wrestling uh, whenever he's 75. <laughs> Oh, man, Hogan. Yeah, we're gonna get into Ric Flair's last match, actually, later on, but, um, so let's get into the last fun fact of tonight's show to end this segment. Josh, this was a, this was very big at the time. Did you know that splinter-free toilet paper was invented in 1935? Splinter-free? <laughs> splinter-free. It was marketed in 1935 as splinter-free. So I, I don't even know what the ad would say. It's like, hey, you like wiping your ass? Like, imagine wiping it without getting splinters in your funnel. <laughs> Oh man, and I know this is a horrible segue, but hey, if you like 80s shows, and uh, you can go to 80stees.com and you can probably find a Ninja Turtle shirt with Master Splinter on it. Uh, <laughs> and you can get 30% off using Slash Tracks 30. Yeah. So no, Splinter Free. So they were using like uh, toilet paper with uh, wood in it before that? Or, or probably what? just bark or like or pieces, pieces of cedar. I don't know. Um,. The problem must have been so bad that they, this is the big innov innovation for toilet paper that they're marketing it as splinter free. It's like, man, I re so that's a tough decision, Josh. It's like, I really want to wipe my ass today, but I don't want it to be uh, infested with splinters uh, cutting my butthole open. Or do I want to have swamp ass all day? <laughs> you're either going to have a butthole full of splinters and wood chips, or you're going to have swamp ass. The Roman Empire had like uh, corn cobs on sticks and shit, man. Uh, at their at their uh, public toilets, it was just holes cut in wood, like a line of them, and uh, even rolled like uh, the, the richest of the rich would, you know, just be having a conversation and sit down and do their business right in front of everybody. Well, there was a so okay, so rich people usually have bidets, so like. The fountain that comes up out of the toilet or whatever and sprays their culo. No, um, mountain folks, if you ever find yourself in a hotel, yeah, uh, don't drink it. Um, but so they'll have so Lanny Poffo, uh, Macho Man's brother, the genius. I listened to a 
uh, like a interview he gave, and somebody was like, "Lanny, uh, you don't use toilet paper. You use a bidet." And he's like, "Yes, I've had a bidet in you know every house I've owned, and uh, you know when people, um, you know when people are uh, when you're when you're cleaning something in your house, uh, you don't you don't smear it. You don't smear it to clean it. You spray it." And then the interviewer was like. We were just talking about uh, your count out match against uh, Hulk Hogan at Saturday Night's main event, and now we're talking about you using a bidet on your on the genius's butt. But anyway, the genius Lanny Poffo, leaping I Lanny Poffo. That's a lot properly. I don't know, man. Who's smearing that much? Exactly. Like, you, know, uh, you know, get some, wipe, get some wet wipes or something, buddy. Wipe till you're clean, genius. Also, he's the genius. Obviously, he's not that much of a genius if he doesn't know how to wipe his own asshole. He thinks it's like cleaning, so he just goes in a circle, you know, and it's just going everywhere. Um, well, the genius might have had... We just like, got canceled. What's yeah, that? Well, the genius might have had some marker shits. My friends and I call them marker shits because... Okay, we talked about those. <laughs> yeah, you'll just wipe and wipe and wipe, and you can wipe all day long, but no matter what happens, you're going to have just one little line of something on the toilet paper. And there's also Houdini shits. That's where you definitely had a nice one, and there you wipe your butt, and there's nothing on the toilet paper. So I don't know. And then there's also ones where you, you poop. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, diarrhea, and then wiping that up with splinters. Woo! What if you wanted to get your money back because you got a splinter in your ass? Would you have to, like, prove it to the company back then? You'd be like, hey, man, uh, I'm going to bring my ass right down here to the grocery store or wherever they sell toilet paper before 1935, and you're going to take a look yourself, pal. (laughs) Um, Let's get into – let's leave the asshole talk with the fun facts tonight, and let's segue into our next segment, Josh. Sports. Yeah. Yeah. um, Josh would actually rather – have his asshole filled with splinters and talk about sports uh, in this episode. But unfortunately, we have Slashaholics that enjoy this segment, so we're going to do it. And Josh, I have a really good one to start out tonight's uh, sports segment with. Okay, what you got? All right. 28 years ago, Josh, uh, on July 20th, 1994, O.J. Simpson uh, offered uh, a $500,000 reward for evidence of his ex-wife's killer. So 28 years ago, O.J. Simpson, naked gun, he played Nordberg, uh, Hall of Fame, Buffalo Bills running back, played at uh, USC, Heisman Trophy winner. O.J. offered half a million dollars uh, for evidence that would lead to the arrest of the real killers that killed his wife. Well, hey, if the glove doesn't fit, you're full of shit, right? Well, exactly. And I also have one question about this, Josh. Um, I wonder how O.J. Simpson actually ended up spending the five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> right? Did he? What did he buy with that money? Because well, he wants know, evidence for the real he, killer. If he did it today, he would end up spending it in gas just to run away from the police. Yeah. The uh, what kind of gas mileage was that Bronco getting? That ninety four yeah, Bronco. Yeah. They do. Fifth grade man, our fifth grade class. We we're sitting there watching him. Uh, fleeing from the police, uh, our teacher was just enamored with it. So it was like third hour. Every third hour during, you know, we'd have to watch the OJ stuff because that's what he was watching all day. The case, like the trial? The the chase. The first was the chase, like replay of that, you know, and the interviews and stuff, and then the trial and everything, yeah. yeah. Do- so here's a fun fact to piggyback off of the OJ thing. So Domino's, the night of him fleeing in the Bronco, Domino's Pizza Company, had their record sales day ever, still to this day, uh, for deliveries because of that chase. Nobody wanted to leave their house to, to cook, go to the grocery store or get anything. They all ordered Domino's pizza. That's kind of crazy. I wonder what... Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Um, here's something money-related. Here's another story that's money-related that Josh is going to absolutely hate. Mm-hmm. Uh, Floyd Money Mayweather. The boxer, have you heard of Floyd Mayweather? Oh, yeah. Him and Big Show and stuff, that was so stupid. All right. Floyd Mayweather, he's the richest athlete in the world. He, he makes, like, he doesn't just make $100 million for a fight. He makes, like, $200 million for a fight. He makes a ton of money. He's undefeated. Um, Floyd Money Mayweather recently spent $18,000 on a mink fur-lined car seat for his grandson, that was installed in his $350,000 Rolls Royce. 
So his grandson has a mink-lined fur car seat in his Rolls Royce. What are your thoughts on that, Josh? What do you does that make? Does that please you? No, no. That's ridiculous, dude. It, it, he doesn't have custody of the grandson, so the kid's probably only riding in that thing. Or grandkid, I don't know if it's a boy or guy, whatever. It, the he's baby's, still, it, it's, he's saying it's for his grandson, but since he stopped growing at like eight years old... It might be uh, for him. It's for him, because if you're not a certain height and weight, you have to ride in a car seat, so or booster seat. So. Mayweather is probably the most boring boxer I've ever seen fight in my life. He doesn't knock out anybody. He does. He's strictly defense and counterattacks, and he wins on points every match that he boxes. You can't, you can't outpoint him. You can't outhit him. He's very fundamentally sound, but if you watch his fights, they are boring, extremely boring. I love. Uh, all the rich people out there and all the philanthropists and everybody's like, oh, they're such great people. They do this. They do that for this and that. You know, until there's somebody that's got all this money and they just decide to give it to everybody, you know, I'm going to believe that uh, having money corrupts. You know, like you, you're, you're going to be greedy uh, and spend how much? $18,000 on a car seat? A fur-lined mink. Carson. That's that's ridiculous. Do you know who doesn't uh, do things like that and actually does give back to the people? Who's that? Shaquille O'Neal, and he's actually our next story, Josh. Okay. All right. So this isn't about Shaq uh, giving away money in WalMarts or buying groceries or buying laptops or anything or buying engagement rings. We covered that in a previous episode. But Shaq does do those things. Uh, there's also a YouTube video of Shaq when he works for NBA on TNT. Um, Shaquille O'Neal on like, I think it was around the holidays. They show him getting out of his car, going into the studios. He's literally handing hundred dollar bills to the doorman, to the person who's running catering to the person who, uh, just anybody that worked at TNT studios, he's handing hundred dollar bills to everybody. So he does stuff like that. But Shaquille O'Neal, Josh is upset. You have any idea why he's upset, Josh? Money? No, has nothing to do with money. He can't end any of his messages with love Shaq because the B-52s ruin that for him. What? Yeah, he what can't. The same? So if he writes an email or something to, or to his sweetheart or a letter to his family, he can't say love Shaq. And he's upset about it. He actually was just quoted because the B-52s wrote love Shaq and it, it ruined it for poor Shaq. Why don't he just put love Shaq foo? Or warmest regards, Shaquille. <laughs> All my best, Shaq. Or or uh, regards, Bernard. Or war, warmest Who's regards, Bernard. It's, it's yeah. Shaq. Hey. Uh. All right. So here's the last sports story of the night, and uh, this is kind of a crazy one. Michael Jordan had more forty point games in his career than games where he scored less than twenty points. Yeah. So Michael Jordan. More 40-point outbursts in his career than games where he scored less than 20 points. That's absolutely insane to think okay. about. Was Michael that Jordan. baseball or basketball? <laughs> basketball. He wasn't much of a baseball player. He tried, though. Um, he led the, the AA minor league uh, the season he played in steals. So he was still really fast and super athletic. His problem was he had a huge hole in his swing. He struck out a lot. He had a really big problem with curveballs. Not that great of an outfielder. Um, but in his defense, for a guy who hadn't played baseball since high school, to all of a sudden jump into double A, which is two levels below <laughs> Major League Baseball, if he wasn't Michael Jordan, he probably wouldn't have been, even been able to pull off what he did pull off. So that's crazy. I remember in um, Space Jam, you know, him doing the baseball thing. Yeah. And golf. Um, do you remember when I think of Michael Jordan and other famous athletes from the '90s? I think of those shirts that had the Looney Tune characters wearing their jersey. Absolutely. Go, uh, those were like all the rage in like the mid '90s. Um, no, but I believe it. He was badass. So. Yeah, he would. Um, let's. Uh, so we ended good. We we ended slash track sports on a high note instead of talking about. Uh, Floyd Mayweather with his fur-lined baby seats. Michael Jordan, the GOAT. Uh, if Michael Jordan ever... I'm going to extend an invitation right now. If Michael Jordan's a slashaholic and wants to be a, a guest on this show, Josh, 
do I have your blessing? Can he can he come on the sports segment with us? Yeah. All right. So Michael, if you're out there watching and you want to be on the show, give us give the slash slash Alex secretary a call. Uh, she actually works at the Arkansas branch right now. And uh, if you can't get a hold of her, call the Eugene branch, uh, and then we'll set something up. Wait, what's that? Oh, they're coming to the show. Really? Wow. Okay. Thanks for warning us. So the Slash Track Studios has just been given a 60% chance of nuclear grizzly attack, so um, be careful. 60%, huh? Yeah. Oh, so you made it seem like Michael Jordan was coming to the show, but instead of Michael Jordan showing up, we got nuclear grizzlies showing up. Yeah, yeah. That was the coke coke bees that called. uh, (laughs) The coked coked out bees uh, are the receptionists for the nuclear grizzlies. Um, Josh, dude, let's get into some... So I'm just going to let all the Slashaholics know right now that Josh and I are very aware that a lot has gone on in the world of professional wrestling, and we're just going to get into it right now. And we apologize that we didn't release anything a little sooner, um, but we're just going to get into it right now. Let's get into Slash Tracks Wrestling. Let's do it. All right. I'm just going to lead off with this, the very first story. Um, So Vince McMahon, uh, owner, chairman, CEO of WWE, has officially retired. Uh, He retired two or three days ago. Uh, He released a tweet that said he's 77 years old and it's time for him to retire. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, my initial thoughts, you know, Josh, because the story that I had written down in the rundown for this episode before was how more stories are expected to come out on WWE's Vince McMahon as employees and talent are being contacted. So Wall Street Journal, who initially broke the first Vince McMahon hush money story, uh is doing a follow-up story. So they're actually contacting former divas and former female talent. So they, they're doing that. And then HBO Real Sports with Bryant Gumble is also doing an expose and a deep dive, and they're contacting former female talent. Um, that's why he retired right there. Yeah, retired. so there's more that's going to come out, right? It's not just the 12 to $14 million in hush money. Yeah. There's going to be something weird. He knows it. They all know it. And they're trying to get out ahead of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Na, uh, na, 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 Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Time. It's time anyway. It, it's He's 10 years past due to retire anyway. Why would you have a 77-year-old man running a company that's that huge and that popular? And he's he's on the cutting edge of nothing anymore. He's literally, he, he used to be known for all these innovation, any innovations and, and outside-the-box thinking. He is so rem, far removed from anything that's considered a new idea or, or funny or, or interesting or entertaining. He's, dude, as soon as they went public and WCW didn't exist anymore and, you know, that led to them being the only company in existence, basically, where a pro wrestler could reach the big time, other than independence, and, like, TNA kind of a little bit. Um, as soon as, you know, and, and them going public eventually led to them signing the deal with Peacock, you know, 20 years later. Uh, yeah. the, w, the WWE, now, all this stuff. So they signed all these huge deals with Fox and, and USA Network. So they're making all this money, and they don't have to put out a good product anymore. They just have to put out content. So Vince doesn't give a shit. They just put out stuff because they have to. They're contractually obligated. The product is at an all-time low, but you know what, Josh? Triple H this morning was just uh, appointed head of WWE Creative. So he's taken over all of the creative aspects. I think he can do good at that. Um, Me too. Me too. As long as he's not booking himself, then I trust him with with the pencil. He can't. He can't book himself. He's got the yeah. So he's gonna do a good job. I think he's got a he's got a really good head. He took the NXT brand and made it something really, really, really fun to watch. Instead um, of a quality show like it was in the beginning or whatever. Yeah, dude. He Triple H being head of creative is a huge deal. And the new CEO, uh, there's co CEOs. So you got Nick Khan and you've got Stephanie McMahon. And Stephanie McMahon is also the chairwoman of the board. So Vince's daughter is the head cheese. Nick Khan is 
you know, if you're playing uh, a video game, Nick Khan's the boss you fight before you get to Stephanie, and then Triple H is right below them. So, who who runs the AEW? Tony Khan. Are they related? Absolutely not. Okay. Totally that's random. Weird. It's that's two weird. two two pro wrestling CEOs are both have the last name of Khan. That's that is funny. weird. That is that that's yeah. I'm very excited. I'm Josh. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I can. I'm, tell. I'm glad he's done. I'm glad he's like, gone. Man. It looks like you just all of a sudden got a clear head a second ago. Did your congestion go away? Did yeah. you get excited about it? I did. Uh, <laughs> all no, yeah. see is the hero. Um, yeah, it's like all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm oh, so excited. Vince I'm so is retired. So, I'm so scared. Oh, my nose. I can breathe. Um, Vince McMahon is on the cutting edge of the Reaper scythe. That's about it. Uh, right now, so uh, I'm glad he's gone. He's a piece of crap. There's other pieces of crap that need to go away too. Um, yeah, I think I think once you hit like 75, 76, you don't need to be running a company or a country or anything. You know, he shouldn't uh, even have a driver's license anymore. I think you should have to retake your test at like 70, you know, and then 75, and then 80. I'm not being a dick about it. I'm just saying for their safety and everybody else's. It's, you know? it's just facts. Um, of the matter. When you get older, you slow down, you're not as sharp anymore, you're not really on the cutting edge of most things because your primary function when you're in your late 70s, early 80s is probably just not to die that day. Let's get through today. Let's get through today, Josh. And let's then tomorrow, it. let's get through tomorrow. <laughs> then we'll talk about <laughs> WWE talent after that, okay? We'll talk about booking later on. The only thing that I'm worried about with this is Bruce Pritchard still has a job. So, but I don't know that it'll be for very long because Bruce Pritchard historically has not gotten along with Stephanie and Mc, Stephanie McMahon. Okay. I don't like Bruce. I really don't. He's, I don't. He's a kiss ass. I can't believe half of what he says because he's just going to kiss McMahon's ass. Every yeah, time he's. He talks. I the problem I have with Bruce still even being employed with WWE at this point is he's a ama- like he is well known for whenever he wrote anything or whenever he pitched anything he was pitching and writing for an audience of one he wrote and pitched ideas for what he knew Vince McMahon would like not what the WWE on audience wants to see what Vince wants to see a seventy seven year old man who's completely out of touch so. Does Bruce even know how to write a wrestling show or pitch wrestling ideas anymore at this point? No. It's not 1986 anymore. I thought it was weird when Vince hired Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff to run Raw and SmackDown, and he fired them within, like, three weeks. It's like you didn't even give them a chance to uh, do anything. He He did that because he was trying to... He was trying to, uh, like play to the board uh, and try to like, hey, I know the show is getting bad reviews. I know people don't like the product right now that I'm putting out. So I'm going to bring in these two figureheads and hopefully this will make the board think I'm trying to change things. But in reality, Vince McMahon, as we all know, is going to do things the way Vince McMahon wants to do. Yeah, it was like three weeks. I think Bruce Pritchard played a part in Eric and Paul being let go. Um Anyways, Vince, I'm glad he's gone. I'm so glad there's not a bunch of stories coming. Uh, but one quick one, I don't, we don't have to go into like super detail about it. That clip you sent from AEW, where they yeah, the botch. the botch, it was worse than the Stone Cold Stunner. Um, so yeah, that was great. The Jer- yeah. So Josh is referring slashaholics to. I sent him a clip of the AEW match where Chris Jericho was in like a hardcore barbed wire match, and there's like Chris is being. Chris is going to hit somebody with a barbed wire bat and this other guy he's going to hit is being held against his will, you know, so he's going to blast him. But the guy is supposed to escape and Chris is supposed to probably waffle the other guy with the bat. But instead, their timing's completely off. Chris, like, waits for the guy. Like, they're jerking around. Um, Chris drops the bat and then they try to, like, put him in a hold, but they don't know what they're doing because they're kind of, like, dancing on the fly. I mean, it's horrible. It is horrible. It's It's bad. Yeah, there was another botch, uh, and I, I don't think it was AEW, or maybe it was. Um, I think it might have been NXT, but this girl, her gimmick is she's a skateboarder, and she's going to hit her opponent with a skateboard, and it's a gimmick. Broke. Yeah, it's a gimmick skateboard. So she's gonna she's got it above her head, 
and she's going to hit her opponent with the board. But the board broke in half before it even made... Yeah, the momentum of the, just moving the board down. Broke the board in half. It's ridiculous, man. Well, it's indie circuit. We don't cut tables and shit beforehand. When you like, when I got put through a table, I got put through a fucking table. Yeah, it wasn't gimmicked beforehand. It's exactly. the real deal. All right, Josh. Uh, let's get into uh, the second wrestling story of the evening. What we got? All right, July thirty first. Ric Flair's last match is actually going to happen. So the card. This is going to be the main event right here. Ric okay. Flair and Andrade, who is Andrade is married to Charlotte Flair, and he was in WWE, and I think he's in AEW now. I'm not sure. Um, him and him and Flair versus Jeff Jarrett, Mr. Double J himself, and Jay Lethal, who does the greatest other woo woo in the business. So, Macho Man too. He was. Uh... Wasn't he Black Machismo or whatever? Yeah, he does. He does really good impersonations of uh, Macho Man and Ric Flair. Um, they've shot a storyline where Flair's walking to his car or something, and, and Jay Lethal's like upset that he's not going to be involved in the pay per view uh, because he was the one training Ric Flair. The videos of Flair getting ready for this comeback for his final match were of Lethal and Flair in the ring, and then Flair's like, "Hey, you know, you're just not a big enough name." Uh, you're, you don't have enough drawing power. So then Lethal gets pissed off, turns on him, starts attacking Flair. Double J shows up to defend Flair while Flair is being, uh, pulled off of, by, you know, Jay Lethal is, you know, beating the crap out of him. Double J is trying to save him. Flair says to Double J, uh, I hated your father. I hate you. Whatever. For some reason, I don't know why he says it. So then Double J busts him wide open. Like, Flair's bleeding all over the place. So the match ends up being Double J and uh, Jay Lethal versus Andrade and Flair. That's going to be the match. So the story was Flair was training to be on a wrestling show. Yeah, for his last match. But there was, he wasn't booked against anybody because it was wide open to be whoever yeah. did this in the story. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, they didn't even so have a match. They didn't even have an opponent yet. The match is when? It, it's going to be July 31st, and if you want to get it on pay-per-view, uh, it's going to be thirty four ninety nine. And then there are there are other tiers where, with, like, special perks and incentives that are, go up to, like, over $100. And then they're going to broadcast his funeral four days after? Was yeah, that and that, was? you can also get that on pay-per-view. That'll oh. be forty nine ninety nine. And I actually re- responded to a tweet of they're talking about Flair's last match. And then I put a picture of Apollo Creed dead in the ring after the fight with Ivan Drago. And I said, I hope this isn't the final image of Ric Flair's last match. Should have done a dude from the wrestler jumping off the top rope at the end, you know? Uh, Crossbody, his Ric Flair's famous crossbody. (laughs) He's dead. Yeah, he actually nails it this time. You know, he doesn't get grabbed and and thrown. Um, I honestly think that if he does die in this match, that's the way he wanted to go out. And he's not a very good person. He's done some really bad things. Yep. But he's done a lot for the world of wrestling. And if he wants to die in the ring, I respect it. That's his That's his prerogative. So I love how, wrestling, too. I, I can see wanting to do that. So. How did Ric Flair even get licensed to, to wrestle at 73? Uh, money and connections to the, he's, you know. He's already... He already has an injury that he's dealing with right now. He has plantar fasciitis, which his foot, basically his whole foot, is killing him from running it's the like, ropes again and taking bumps and stuff. You no, know, he probably got licensed because I'm going to tell you right now, the athletic boards are jokes, okay? They don't even take the pro wrestling part serious. Um, in, in fact, this whole sports entertainment thing has made it where some like WWE doesn't even have to get licensed in most states. Mm-hmm. I did know that. Arkansas and Oklahoma, it is so, they take it, it's like such a joke to them. Uh, my first wrestling license for Oklahoma, uh, my Arkansas one was normal, but my first Oklahoma one said professional wrestler. It wasn't uh, spelled correctly? Oh, the I was missing. So I was a professional wrestler, and my best friend at the time his license had him, instead of being born in 85, 65. 
He was born in 65. Nice. So he was way older. So we were so happy to be able to be professional wrestlers. Um, but yeah, he probably slipped him money or he's got connections from way back. That's how he got licensed. They don't take wrestling serious. They really don't. Dude, dude so I've been like, you know, doing research for the show and I'm always looking at stuff and there's a photo circulating the internet right now, Slashaholics, uh, shows Flair t- lacing his boots up. The purple ones, the famous ones that have the RF and he's kind of bent over. He is winded. He looks like he he's blown up lacing up his boots, Josh. Uh, I I don't if he I think part of him wants to die in the ring. And that, I I seriously mean that. I I really feel like that's what part of this is. And if it's not this match, I think he'll do another one until he dies in that ring. God, so. I, dude, so this this event by the way has other preliminary matches. It's like a full card. And it has, the venue has sold out. Like, people are going to go watch this thing. It'll it'll be the second time uh, I bought a pay-per-view and watched somebody die. Uh, The first one was Over the Edge in 99. I was watching that that night. And even with the delay, if you watch the original pay-per-view, you see him start to descend. And then it cuts to like a promo, uh, pre-recorded promo, because they had like a three or four second delay. Yeah. And I can't believe they finished that that goddamn show, man. To this day, I cannot believe they finished that show with blood in the ring. Well, how do okay? I agree with you one hundred percent. How are how the hell were they even legally able to finish the over the edge pay per view when Owen had just fell in the ring and died? It could have been a crime scene. How how is the police in Missouri not roping off the ring? And you, it's a it's an active crime scene. They don't know if somebody uh, you messed up the the you know the what the carabiner that he's supposed to use to descend into the ring. Nobody knows what happened. Big thing that uh, the one he practiced on and the one he used weren't the same. Uh, that it, the one he used to to fall in was like for a juvenile. And uh, the clipper, the pressure thing, a little, you know, the uh, quick release. It was... Yeah, the quick release like broke. And there's just so much that it, I can't believe they finished that show. I Vince, really don't. Vince is a Vince is a piece of shit for even wanting to continue that show. Um, also, good news, bad news situation with that. Um, I know we talked about Chris Jericho earlier, but I read uh, Owen's wife's Martha's book um, about. Her, you know, Owen and her life together. Apparently, Chris Jericho, when he just broke into the business, offered to pay for Owen's funeral. Wow. And Martha said, no, Chris, you know, I appreciate it. But that's that's what kind of a guy Chris Jericho is. I know he gets a lot of disrespect and uh, his political views. He's a Trump guy. And his wife apparently was at the January 6th insurrection. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's a whole nother story. But Chris Jericho, he's... Involved in a lot of weird stuff, but he is at, at his core of a good person. So I, I've got great respect for him as far as wrestling goes. Yeah, you know I'm glad Vince and his buddy are both getting taken down right now. But uh, I heard that Martha is actually letting AEW do like tribute shows and a stuff. tournament. That, yeah, they did the o- Own Heart yeah. Cup. They already had it. Yeah, they, like I can see everything. You think she would let them induct them into their Hall of Fame if they had one? Uh, yes. And she'll he, never let WWE do it. No, because she holds them responsible for his death, as she should. As she should. They WWE handled it completely the wrong way. Had Shane, had Shane been the person that died in the ring, you think Vince is continuing that pay-per-view? Probably not. Then again, he's a piece of shit, so I don't really know. Yeah, so I'm not... Listen, I'm happy Vince is out. Vince has done a lot of weird crap. Like, when Martha Owen's widow was suing the WWE over the wrongful death of Owen, Vince was having Natty Neidhart's mother, Ellie, go into Stu and Helen's office and take paperwork from their side of the legal case and fax it to Stanford, Connecticut, so WWE would know what the other side of the legal team was going to come at them with, so they could defend it better. Because, because Ellie was married to Jim Neidhart, 
and she was trying to hopefully secure Jim another run with WWE in the future. It's disgusting. It's just fucking yeah. disgusting. So Vince McMahon's a piece of crap. Um, speaking, so let's let's get out of that real quick and let's talk about the next wrestling story. Uh, I just want to touch on this really quick and get your thoughts on this. Uh, Roman Reigns recently surpassed 100 days as the unified champion. So he's the champion of SmackDown and Raw. But he's only defended his title in the last 100 days one time. Why are they unifying him? The whole point was to have a title for each show. I I hate when they pull this shit, dude. I, I don't know why they... Is he carrying both belts or did they make a belt uni- unifying them? I have... He's only wrestled once in the last 100 days and I haven't caught it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Um, I think he's got both belts and all... But don't quote me. And also, the reason I thought they were going to Roman Reigns to be the bearer of the the, the championship and the, and the face of the company was because Brock Lesnar only competed at select pay-per-views. So... They wanted a guy who was going to be there for the company on a more day to day basis. So basically, they took that the belt. For him. They took the belt off of a guy, Brock Lesnar, who was very part time, and put the belt on another guy in Roman Reigns, who's very part time. What well, the hell are you doing? Deserves it, and let him run with it. You know, Roman Reigns and Seth freaking fucking Rollins can. I've never. Believe their hype, man. Not Cody. For one second, Cody Rhodes, I think, was going to be the guy they were going to put the belt on. But as soon as he got injured, they had to pivot. And now they're like SummerSlam. The main event is going to be Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. And Brock Lesnar was a fill-in for somebody else. And then when Vince McMahon retired the other day, right? The breaking news: Brock Lesnar said, well, if Vince is gone, I'm gone. And he walked out on SmackDown that day. He walked out on the company. And so, yeah, so they were actually talking about replacing the replacement. So Brock Lesnar was the replacement. They were going to replace him, who he was replacing somebody else, with Goldberg for SummerSlam. Um, I'll take this. I'll go ahead. No, Brock ended up showing up. They talked him back into showing up at the end of uh, SmackDown. He showed up in F5'd Austin Aries. Got a crazy idea for him. How about you use people that are dedicated to the business, that aren't part timers at all, that aren't spectacle workers, that are actually really good workers? Mm-hmm. They have people like Curtis Axel. That motherfucker could work. You know, he could have been something way bigger, but they never fucking gave him a time of day. Bray East Slater, Wyatt. East Slater, Drew Bray. McIntyre, Bray Wyatt. Um, there's Josh is 100 percent correct. There's so many wrestlers. That were great wrestlers, great on the mic, charisma, everything, it. and they you don't know, use them. So many, and and instead they want to use the Goldbergs and the Brock Lesners and shit. Oh my God! There's it, no I long. Triple H does something with that company different because it's. I don't even watch it, man. I use when I watch the network. I'm watching fucking eighties and nineties wrestling. You Me know, too. I've, war been, shit. I've been so, watching Saturday Night's Main Event a lot lately on the Peacock. I think they had like the the rest of the nineties shit, like ninety four, ninety five, ninety six. They have a they've been, they've added a ton, a ton of you you would definitely be able to find what you're looking for. Before it was all they had was like ninety one through ninety three or something. They've added they've added more. What about <clears throat> Thunder? Is Thunder still on there? I don't know. I don't really, see. I wasn't a big WCW guy, but they do have a lot of WCW stuff. A ton. Saturday night before Nitro and Thunder. Saturday night was like their flagship show. You know, there's episodes with Hogan and Macho Man and stuff on it um, that I'd love to watch. Uh, anyway, cool. Um, um, I was going to say, so the last wrestling story of this episode, Josh, uh, on July 7th, so a couple weeks back, on July 7th, 26 years ago, the NWO was born. So the NWO and WCW, Josh's bread and butter, and... Uh, when I started watching WCW, this is when I started watching WCW. I remember the whole storyline. The Outsiders show up. Uh, Scott Hall jumps over the fence at Nitro. Yeah. Says he's got some buddies that are coming with him. And they show up at, was, was it the Bash at the Beach, 96? I showed up on Nitro. And then they were going to have a, three, a, a six-man tag. Uh, Sting, Lex... And Macho Man versus the Outsiders and their mystery, the third man. And then uh, during the match, 
uh, Hogan comes walking out. And Bobby the Brain Heenan fucked it all up. He goes, but whose side is he on? You know, exactly. Like, and you hear Mike Tanay or Tony Schiavone, whoever, like, he's Hogan. He's a good guy. It's like, God, shut the fuck up. Exactly. You just let the cat out of the bag. But that's Bobby the Brain. He's always been like that with Hogan. Even you watch him, he always tries to treat Hogan like a hill. But in this instant, he needed to shut his fucking mouth. Yeah. He, like, blew it. He uh, didn't even need to say anything. He should have just... Waited oh, to react. Hogan again, coming to save the day. Mm-hmm. That's what he could have said. But uh, Hogan does it, says, uh, all you fans out here can stick it. You've been booing me and stuff. Uh, this is a new world order of wrestling, and the rest is history. And they and it, went with that for like a year and a half, almost two years, kicking, night, uh, uh, kicking Raw's ass, and then they ran out of ideas, and it was all politics, Kevin and Hogan, who's going to win this, who's going to end Goldberg's streak, and all that shit. Um, it was a fun ride. I stayed with WCW until the bitter end, uh, till the bitter fucking end. And then I saw it, man, on the last night show, and I was like, God damn it! It's, it's I was like, it's over. It, wrestling's not going to be fun anymore. I I remember uh, when NWO first started to to happen. I being a huge Hulkamaniac, it was a big adjustment for me. Um, and I remember just black and white. And I just remember hating Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And later on, dude, later on, as an adult, you know, talking to you and talking to other people about wrestling, I hated Hulk Hogan, and that's because he was doing such a great great job as a heel. He made me hate his ass. Friend of the family, my dad's best friend, uh, and his son was my best friend growing up, they uh, would always rent the pay-per-views, and we'd go over and, like, have a pay-per-view party, you know, raw, yeah. WWE, WWF and WCW. And uh, they would always be wearing, like, a Goldberg shirt or the Wolfpack shirt. I always had on my NWO black and white. They fucking hated me because I'm sitting there rooting for fucking Scott Norton. And <laughs> Too sweet, Hogan. baby. Uh, when Hogan lost the belt to Goldberg, man, I was, like, tell- me and my dad were watching it. I was like, uh-oh, Hollywood's going down, Josh. I was like, no, Goldberg will win. It'll be a count out or something. It's not going to. And then I was like, Spear. Jackhammer. <laughs> no, what the fuck? He went uh, over. But, but when Hogan turned face, like I said, on my, like my 16th birthday, it was just as big to me. Whenever he, when he turned back into a good guy, uh, it was just as big. I, I, I followed him hill from face to hill to face. Uh, but when Piper was there, I was torn. Uh, and I was definitely rooting for Piper, uh, especially when he beat Hogan with the sleeper hold. Even as a teenager, I was like, "Wow, yeah, Hogan that's a big let, that's a big deal." Yeah, <laughs> Hogan let somebody beat him with a sleeper hold. They main evented Starcade. It was great. They, it was a good match too. Yeah, Piper Hogan, like they were able to main event Starcade in '97, like literally 13 years after they main evented WrestleMania one or 12 years. It was 96, wasn't it? 97 was Sting and Hogan. 96 or 97. It was, yeah. They kind of blend in for me, yeah. Sting um, messed up the the 97 one. Uh, they were supposed to do a fast count, and then Bret Hart comes out and says, no, nobody's getting screwed over here. Uh, but the referee fucked it up and did a regular count. Yeah, and it looked ridiculous. It's like, what are you... confusing. Like, what are you trying to save him from, Bret? <laughs> you know? Nothing. You gotta, you gotta I heard that... I heard that Hogan was responsible for that, by the way. That's what they all say. Sting was actually on drugs at the time. Like, he was not well. Sting? Uh, yeah, Sting. He he had he had a... There's a movie, uh, his life story, kind of. Uh, I'll try to... I've got a copy somewhere. I'll send it to you. He struggled with, uh, with some stuff. So. Okay. Well, let's get into uh, some horror and spooky news. Let's, let's leave the wrestling behind. Horror and spooky news. Um... Can I say something before we get into that segment? Yeah. Um, I wanted to say RIP to uh, somebody, uh, Paul Servino. Uh, he's a vi- he was a very good actor, but he was also a hell of a singer. Uh, he was God in The Devil's Carnival and The Devil's Carnival Alleluia, the musicals. And he was also the main villain in Repo, the Genetic Opera. Uh, the dude was was a great opera singer and a great actor. Uh, he always had like that scowl on his face. 
Um, but yeah, he was great. I was really sad to hear of his passing. I always hoped they would do a, a Devil's Carnival 3, uh, but that, that ship sailed. Um, but yeah, so rest in peace, uh, Mr. Servino. I loved Paul Servino in Goodfellas. When he played Polly, the mob boss. It's perfect. He, just so intimidating and he was like his presence he didn't have a ton of lines but he was like such a like whenever he was on in a scene you could just feel his presence through the screen he was just a towering person he had charisma without even speaking he was great great yeah um so let's get into the horn spooky news r.i.p Polly. All right, Josh, the Halloween Ends trailer has been released. Is there like Tim seen... Michaels in it or something? I don't know if there's rumors on the internet that it's not the true Michael Myers. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't, haven't I don't seen know. Halloween Kills yet. I'm waiting until uh, Ends comes out. I'm just going to watch them all again. I watched the first one. I have not seen the second one. Uh, so we can't really go into spoiler spoilers, but I heard something about it not being Michael or having two Michaels. And it just seems really convoluted, and it's like, why? I don't know. Listen, I the tra- trailers nowadays give away too much anyway. Uh, this one doesn't. <laughs> this one doesn't really give away that much. It's like a minute and 20, 20 seconds long. But um, the way that Michael Myers was presented in Halloween Kills, I'm just, and I'm not going to spoil anything. It's just like I'm going to have a hard time believing that Jamie Lee Curtis is going to have any effect on him in in Halloween Ends. <laughs> Um, he's booked very strong in Halloween Kills. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So I don't, I don't know how on earth they're gonna defeat Somebody him. Somebody commented on that episode where we talked about it and said that uh, Jamie's daughter dies in the movie. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, uh yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, well, as long as it wasn't the granddaughter, I'm okay. Um, so let's put a little bow on this story. Am I excited for it? Not really. Um, Halloween Kills wasn't wasn't a very good film. Um, I think they should have ended it with Halloween, the 2018 one. Yeah. And whenever she traps him in the basement, he goes... That's to, it. He should have reached up to grab for them, and those bars, one of the bars should have went through his wrist, and he was pinned right there with his hand pinned by the bars as he burns to death. That would have been the perfect ending. Game over, show over, good conclusion. They didn't need... To do a trilogy that 2018 should have ended right there, and if you wanted to do more Halloween movies, you could have just restarted again, but not from the Jamie, uh, you know, plot points or storylines or whatever. They could have did a, anything else they wanted. It, it's gratuitous. The Halloween kills and Halloween ends. It seems like a complete cash grab at this point. Um, all right, second spooky story of the night, Josh. Mm-hmm. Our boy, your friend and mine, Mr. Corey Feldman. Recently had his birthday, uh, last Saturday. So as we all know, Corey Feldman starred in The Lost Boys. Friday the 13th, the final chapter. The Burbs, Gremlins. But all those movies pale in comparison to his starring role in Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys. Well, that's also episode 8 of Slash Tracks for anybody who wants to go back and watch it. Yeah, deep uh, dive. <laughs> deep dive, deep episode dive. 8. Uh, yeah. Just you know, he he's got to see his daughter before he has sex with the with the villainess of the movie. Yeah. So how old is he? Is he anywhere close to how old his character was supposed to be in Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys? Yeah, he's like thirty years old. He's supposed to be playing like this grizzled professor. No, he's like in his fifties. Corey Feldman's in his fifties. Well, okay. All, although in his real life now he's in his fifties, but he's now he he's trying to play a twenty year old in his normal life. Lord, like I, I, I probably look like I'm in my fifties. I'm like looking at the screen here, and I'm like all white hair in my eyebrows. And that's lighting, dude. That's lighting. You're you're a good looking man, dude. Don't be saying that. You're you're going. You're Benjamin Button right now. You're reverse agent, bud. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, don't be so hard I'll on take yourself. A lie, but uh, Corey Feldman, uh, Corey's Angels tried to do a Hugh Hefner situation, like a Playboy Mansion situation at his own house. He's a fruititarian. He only eats fruit. He still thinks he's going to be a mu- musician, though. If you guys have listened to any of his music, it is awful. Um, it's basically the worst Michael Jackson ripoff I've ever seen. He's terrible. 
You got any thoughts on Corey's music career there, Josh? No. No, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> He's gr- I mean, his movies, uh, Lost Boys, The Burbs, Goonies, Ninja Turtles is Donatello. I love uh, him. Yeah, I love him in a ton of movies. It's just he's... He's a weird guy. <laughs> he's he does a, a really horror movie where he is a rock singer that has a party. It's a funeral because he died, but he's not dead. It's weird. It's really weird. Yeah, he's. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And it, the the thumbnail is a picture of him on a TV screen. It's it's really weird. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think I actually tried to watch that one time, and I was like, I got five minutes in, and I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> like <laughs> red box awesome. horror movie, horrible, yeah. and like Ouija or whatever. Yeah, uh, we got more horror and spooky. Yeah, so here's a quick one. Bob Odenkirk, who, you know, star of Better Call Saul, yeah. Breaking Bad, he played Saul. He sold the rights to his high school photo, his actual high school photo, to Bloomhouse for them to use in Halloween Kills for a news clip to represent Bob from the iconic clo- closet door stabbing scene from Halloween, Halloween 1978. So when they show Bob, the high schooler who gets killed in the closet, from 1978. That's Bob Odenkirk's high school photo that oh, they're yeah. using. That's cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. He uh, um, tonight on the show. It's it's uh, if you go to uh, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul's IMDb. Yeah, they're credited for appearing in tonight's uh, ep- season six, episode ten of Better Call Saul, the final season. Uh, there's only thirteen episodes for the season, and it's going to be over completely tonight's episode ten. And Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul are credited for the episode, so it looks like their return episode that's been talked about is going to be tonight, um, wow. July July twenty fifth. For anybody that's watching it after, uh, but yeah, so just wanted to throw uh, that out there. Uh, looking, looking forward to that one, Josh. That's going to be a lot of fun because we're both huge Breaking Bad guys. Uh, that's going to be good. It's nothing that anybody's guessed so far, and it's not what you what you would think it's going to be. It's not. It's going to be like a. A, an extra scene from Breaking Bad or something. It's going to actually tie into what we've seen on Better Call Saul. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Um, before we get into the last spooky story, I just want to talk real quick about uh, Better Call Saul. Uh, Gene Carlo Esposito, who plays Gustavo Frame, oh, yeah. uh, he's a great actor. Um, but the Better Call Saul seasons were way after Breaking Bad happened. And he's playing a younger version of his character in Better Call Saul. Oh, okay? Better Call Saul is way before Breaking Bad. It's a prequel, yeah. It's supposed to be a prequel. But they're, those episodes are being released in today, like 2022. Yeah. So when I see Giancarlo Esposito playing a character that's supposed to be younger than he was on Breaking Bad, it almost ruins the <laughs> it ruins the illusion for me. Dude, on El Camino, he, Todd was like... 150 pounds heavier than he was. And it ruined it for me then. Because uh, Giancarlo looks old AF. He looks uh, old. He, he wants to, he wants them to make a, a the Rise of Gus Fring show. Like somebody else playing him in his younger years. Okay, you know? okay, okay, hey, I'm down with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm down, down with that. Too. I'm down with that. Um, let's get into the last... <laughs> you just poo-pooed on my... Well, you're like, ah, piss on you, Alex. Ah, I'm sorry. I just... Uh, it's all right. Been, Todd being big did throw me off. I came up with something to explain it to Beth because it was bugging her too. Well, I was like, was... "What?" I was like, "What if this is what Todd looks like for real, right?" But like Breaking Bad was through the eyes of Walt, and this is how Walt saw Todd on Breaking Bad. But Jesse saw Todd for who he really was. You know, Walt saw him as like this kid that's trying to impress him, who's actually applying himself like a and student he's fit and thinner and yeah. And, but really, he was what we saw in El Camino because that movie is through, is through Jesse's eyes. Just, just a same. sloth loser. Like I think that Todd was just trying. He was running out of places to hide his money. He had no more no more room in the fridge, so he was just eating the money. Yeah. He was just eating the money. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, real quick, cause I, we're running out of time too. But uh, Huel, the guy that plays Huel, the bodyguard, mm-hmm. he lost a lot of weight. Yes, he has. That's breaking Bad. They yes, tried yeah. to get him to wear a fat suit on Better Call Saul, and he refused. And I Good applaud. For him. I applaud that. Good for him. He, yeah, he's also in Hubie Halloween uh, as a much thinner version of himself. Uh, last spooky story of the night: Millie Bobby Brown, who's in Stranger Things, she plays Eleven. Um, 
she thinks the creators, the Duffer Brothers, need to get a little more ruthless with the show's ever-expanding cast. So she says, uh, it's getting way too big, uh, Brown joked. Last night, we couldn't even take one picture because there was like 50 of us. I was like, you need to start killing people off immediately. So Millie Bobby Brown thinks they need to start killing people off of the cast of Stranger Things. But it's, you know, I don't like Argyle. I really don't like that character. I haven't finished the last two episodes of season four yet. I don't. I like Eddie, but I don't think he's going to make it. I just don't think he's going to. Uh, but I don't like Argyle. They kind of ruined uh, Jonathan Byers. He was so responsible and so uh, you know beyond his years, and then all of a sudden he's just a lazy pothead, and they totally ruined him and Nancy's story so they can get Nancy and Steve back together. I didn't like shit like that. Uh, but it was a fun season so far. I'm looking forward to the showdown in the last two episodes. I think that um, they made him a pothead because of the weight of all the stuff he's been dealing with, and he's trying to cope with it. I, I honestly think that's what they did with him. <laughs> and Ar- or even. <laughs> who knows? And Argyle, I kind of like Argyle, actually. Um, I, I would just say wait to form your opinion on him until the season's over. Okay. All right. But he is, he is a typical stoner surfer boy. Like He reminds me of Sean Penn in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He's a, he's a good character. He's funny. He's comic relief, 100% comic relief, for sure. Uh, let's get into headlines. Let's end the show with some headlines. Let's do it. All right. Florida man tries to flee uh, capture on a riding lawnmower. And this happened in Crestview, Crestview, Florida. Florida deputies had to taser a man who tried to avoid arrest by escaping on a riding lawnmower. They were attempting to serve an arrest warrant, uh... When the forty-year-old man, they found they actually found him mowing the backyard at the residence they went to arrest him at. So he saw the cops show up. He's on the riding lawnmower, and he's like, "Shit, they're they, they're coming for me!" And he fleed on a riding lawnmower, which is actually the second slowest police chase, right next to the O.J. Simpson white Bronco police chase, which we talked about earlier. Line for this story in the newspapers was John Deere God. Uh, Wow, what a what a fucking story! <laughs> what are they walking by him as he's trying to flee, or what? Right? They, had to, they had to tase him to get him off this? It only goes like ten miles an hour. The cops probably didn't want to run. They probably just like had their daily donut fix or something. Well, it was Florida. It was hot as balls. They're like, we're not chasing this guy. We're tasing this son of a bitch, and we're moving on with the rest of our day. Um, there was a guy who he was like ninety years old. He lost his driver's license, and he wanted to visit his like dying brother. And he, like, drove across the United States on a riding lawnmower. They actually made a movie about that. Oh. Yeah. Um, let's get into the second uh, headline, uh, since we gotta, we got to wrap this show up. It's going pretty long, and we both have things we got to do. i got to go model for 80stees.com later on. I have a gig. <laughs> um, Amazon's Alexa could soon mimic voices of your dead relatives. So... It could mimic any voice as long as they have enough sample size. So here's the deal. Alexa might soon be able to replicate the voice of family members, even if they're dead. The capability invented at Amazon's Mars conference in Las Vegas is in development and would allow the virtual assistant to mimic the voice of a specific person based on a less than one minute of provided recording. Oh. If you have a relative that passed away, and you wanted to still be able to hear their voice or interact with them, that's kind of neat, but it could also be pro- problematic because how would that how would that uh, help the healing process or the grieving process if you're still interacting? And then if you have a substance abuse problem and you're interacting with the vo- dead voice of someone you really cared about, that could be an issue. Yeah, next think. thing you know, you're getting drunk, getting tased on a lawnmower, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, <laughs> As somebody who, I've, I lost four best friends between the time I was 14 to 24, and with the last one, I called his phone constantly to hear the voicemail, and I, that made it harder to move on, you know? So I don't, I don't think this is a good idea. I think this is going to be anti-productive, so I'm, I'm not on board with this one. It's a really interesting gimmick, and I think it's cool if you used it as, like, if you used it to be funny with like a celebrity's voice or something, but if you're using the voice of somebody you cared about, it might not be the best thing for your mental health. Yeah. It's going to be painful. Yeah. It's interesting, but it's, I don't, we both kind of agree. This is not a good idea. 
What do you eight? Hey, think? Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, leave a comment. This is a serious question. What do you guys think about that? Would you guys use the voice of one of somebody you cared about that's passed away uh, for your Alexa? I would absolutely love to hear what your guys' thoughts down there. Um, so we got two more stories here. Uh, Toys R Us coming back, Josh. I miss it. I miss, dude, I miss it bad. And it's not coming back as you remember it. It's going to be, there's going to be a Toys R Us in every Macy's. And it's going to be back in time for the holidays. And some stores are going to have 1,000 square feet. And some of the bigger cities are going to have up to 10,000 square feet. So if you miss Toys R Us, you're going to be able to at least experience it a little bit uh, right before the holidays. And it's probably going to stick around. So I miss Jeffrey the Giraffe. I miss being able to go in and have a selection of toys that aren't just Walmart and Target. So I'm all about this. I collect toys. Now his last name is Amr and his middle name is D. No, say the full name then. Jeffrey Dahmer. That's that's the that's the name of the giraffe. No, it's not. Is it? You piece of crap. No, it's What's not. Ruining it for you? <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. There you go. Crazy. <laughs> um, let's get into the last story. Let's end the show. All right, let's do. What about KB's toy? Are they coming back? I don't think so. And neither is Child World. I, mean, I think they're both done. Well, I, I loved KB's when I was a kid. That's where I got my Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Uh, that's where I got my Nintendo Top Loader, the original Nintendo, when the SNES came out. Yeah. They, you, they made the Top Loader one that looked like a Super Nintendo kind yeah. of funny. Yeah, yeah. I got that at KB's Toys. I used to go, I, man, I missed that. Um, but uh, it was in the mall. Uh, For all the kids that couldn't actually afford a Super Nintendo from poor families, they're like, let's just make this cheap Nintendo that's been out forever look like a Super Nintendo. They did. That's what they yeah. did. Well, cool. Um, all right. Last... <laughs> Last uh, headline of the night. I, now, I'm, I'm having a hard time reading my own handwriting. Uh, a 25-year-old pizza delivery guy actually ran into a burning house and uh, saved the lives of five kids, risking his own life and suffering serious injuries in the process. Nicholas, wow. Nicholas Bastic drove by a house on one of his pizza deliveries that was engulfed in flames and saw that there was no emergency uh, vehicles out there, no fire trucks, nothing. So the house is in fully engulfed. So he decided that he's going to go into the house himself and check to see if everyone's okay because there's no one around. He, it's, it's just on fire. So he goes into the house, starts yelling. Nobody can hear him. He eventually found uh, four kids, right, pulls them out like superhero style, puts them to safe, gets them safely out away from the burning down house, they tell him, hey, we have another sibling. He goes back into the house, can't see because of smoke, and the, he said the heat was so hot that his arm hair was singeing off. He couldn't breathe. He was suffering, like, really bad burns. He gets to the room of the other kid who's on the second floor, grabs the kid, jumps out the second-story window, and in air flips and lands on his side so the kid doesn't land, like, so the wow. kid doesn't hit the ground. He ends up really messing up his whole body. He's burnt, can't breathe. This guy saved five kids from a burning house. He's an absolute hero, Nicholas Bastic. Slash Tracks hero right there. Yeah, dude, and he has a GoFundMe currently set up. His name's Nicholas Bastic, and uh, if you guys want to go and help donate to this hero, uh, just Google it. GoFundMe, Nicholas Bastic, uh, delivery pizza man hero. Not like Argyle from Stranger Things. This guy is uh, like Thor or Spider-Man. Just an absolute stud. The family ended up tipping him the change left over from eighteen fifteen out of a twenty. So yeah, they're like, <laughs> well, and their gas prices are so bad right now. He's like, thanks, appreciate that. It's like, here, keep the change when you get a pizza delivered, you know. And they're like, oh, thanks for the dollar seventy five, asshole. <laughs> yeah, seventeen percent. Wow. You're no, great that's guy. that's that's amazing that uh, there's still people out there that would do something like that. So that gives me a little hope. With all the shits out there and the people worried about such trivial things. That guy is like an absolute hero. Um, here, I don't yeah. know if show up or not, but uh, got a little clap thing here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, well, I'll show up in the video, but it's, it was on the screen here. So Slash Tracks Hero of the Night, Josh. Hey, let's end the show on a positive note, that hero. Let's do it. Yep. And uh, be sure to go to 80stees.com. You're going to find shirts there from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, horror movies, and there's there's even more than shirts. There's all kinds of cool products there. 
Uh, Alex told you about Slash Tracks 30. It gets you 30% off at checkout. Be excellent to each other. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog. Mahalo. Here's the animation.